Hey, Magic the Gathering players and collectors. It's time to have a conversation about stuff. That's Black Lotus. Yeah, how about that, huh? Black Lotus. There it is. No, I'm just fooling. It's actually a proxy. So we're going to talk about proxies and see how they work. And we're going to talk about the can of worms that Wizards has opened recently with what they're doing so here we are that's our conversation so i think we're going to go ahead and dive into a few things here so what i did was that um yeah i want to see with the 30th anniversary um special uh reprint of proxies non-tournament legal gold board or whatever i was like well couldn't i just buy the actual proxies on the internet from China. So I know this is a thing. I had never done it before. So I was like, okay, let's just see what happens, right? I, you know, I was like, well, I'll risk my money so you guys don't have to kind of thing. So I spent, I think it was like $28 with shipping, not for just the Black Lotus. I got some other cards, but we're going to have a good conversation here. But this is a good example of why. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Obviously, this Lotus is fake. Um, it's like, it's definitely on the wrong paper. It's probably too thin and way too glossy. They just don't make them like that, guys. It, back in the day, this is not... The paper is really the issue. The, the text isn't too bad, I guess. But, yeah, the paper just doesn't cut it. Like, let's take a look. I've got uh, all the Power 9 here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the whole Power 9. I got the Lotus. I figure that would catch a few eyes. Uh, I got Time Twister. Uh, Mox Jet. Ancestral Recall. Mox Ruby. The Sapphire. Time Walk. Mox Emerald. And of course, Mox Pearl. So, what you have here is the Power 9. Individually, if I was to go out right now and buy these cards in this condition, let's just say the originals, what do you think I would spend for all this? 30 grand, right? 30, 40 grand? Well, here's the deal. I want you to think about something. To, to go ahead and get Power 9, must be a little more even here. Let's go ahead and do something like that. And there we go. To get the Power 9... And the new thing that they're printing, the 30th anniversary, which doesn't even have the regular magic back. To get that, you would have to spend about 30 to 40 grand just to get maybe, maybe more. You might even need to spend more. You'd have to buy multiple and multiple copies of the, um, the uh, 30th anniversary edition, whatever it is, you know. And... You're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. You could buy a car with what it would cost to, to, to buy the new thing. Whereas, why don't you just buy the originals? I mean, for the cost the cost of the uh, collector edition, you could just buy the original, the real ones, obviously. These ones are uh, fake. Now, I can tell you something. Here's, here's, my, here's my belief about this. Nowadays, if you're just a player... I don't know many players that could ever afford this. I, I really don't. I mean, it's very rare. There's a few people maybe or people in their 40s, 50s, 60s that can afford this kind of stuff that have really good jobs or they got money to blow or they're crypto, you know, crypto gods or something. Yeah, okay, they can buy this kind of stuff. But I can tell you right now, I don't know anybody that can afford power. Well, not necessarily true. I know a few people, but that would, like, take a big chunk out of their savings. So, if you follow where I'm going here, this is really something that's for whales at this point. However, if I just want to play it in a deck as a player, yeah, I could buy these and stick them in a sleeve and play with them. Now, obviously, if I did, okay, let's take a look at something real quick. I don't obviously have a Power 9 card, but let's just go ahead and put, um, one of my, this is my favorite of the Power 9 was the Sapphire. Let's go ahead and drop it in a, um, sleeve real quick. 
I mean, it looks pretty legit. I mean, eh, you know, it's it's a bit too bright, obviously. Believe it or not, this era, the cards weren't very bright. They weren't as bright for some reason. Let me pull one real quick. It's about that old. Okay, here we go. There's Unlimited. So you can kind of see the color, the white color is slightly different on them. Yeah, so... It's too white, and of course, obviously, if I, this is two of those mashed together. If I took this out of the sleeve, I'll show you what happens. See how glossy that is? Not even close. <laughs> I mean, now here's an original um, Unlimited car. It's just a, it's common, I think, or an uncommon or something. So we flip them over. You can kind of see the difference. Like, look how shiny that is. And then this is more of a matte finish. So, you know, back in the days when we used to print out pictures from our parents' printers and stuff. So you have the glossy paper, you'd have the matte paper to get a different kind of photo print. Same idea here. This is way too glossy. It's just, it's, yeah, it's crappy. Um, and then this, of course, is a real magic card, which is, it feels thicker. It just feels different. Um, and yeah, so that's the difference between a proxy, obviously a fake and a real one. But not just that, guys. This is a bigger conversation. A conversation now, I didn't just buy Power 9. This, for $28, I got 108 magic cards of all varying styles, sets, modern, vintage, the whole deal. Uh, we're going to go through some of these. I'm going to show them to you, and we're going to have a really serious conversation here about a few different things. Now, here's the thing. I don't expect people to just walk into a card shop and buy this. There's not a lot of people that can do that. So if you have a proxy of this, kind of doesn't bother me because it's not you're never going to be a customer if you can't afford to be a customer. Uh, it's the same thing I used to say when I when I was a teenager, when I was fourteen, and they would have three, four hundred dollars for like Adobe, whatever Adobe program was popular at that time, and I wanted to use it, but I didn't have three or four hundred dollars. I was never going to be their customer at that age. So, of course, we all pirated stuff back then when we were teenagers. Well, maybe some of us didn't, but we'll say that uh, just about all my friends, we pirated a lot of stuff. Because we had no money. We were poor, but we had a computer, so we could download it and get it into that. So, just the way it works, you know, between videos and, and all that stuff. I couldn't afford to buy all the movies I wanted to see back then or the video games. So, yeah, of course, I downloaded it. Now, obviously, I'm a little older. I don't really need to do that anymore. There's a lot of streaming services. Things are cheaper than they were in that regard. But this, I could never afford. Well, you never know. Maybe someday I will be able to afford something, the real version of these. But I think at this point, the real Power 9 is no longer a player thing. I think the, P the Power 9 is kind of like stocks now. It's become... Unfortunately, it's become a thing that's not available for players. However, it is. You have to get a proxy of it. Or, I, I, guys, I wouldn't waste any money on that stupid Wizards 30th, and edition, 30th Anniversary Edition, whatever it is. Celebration, charge you $1,000 for the chance at getting one of these. But it doesn't even have the regular back. It looks kind of like this because it would be a new magic card. It would look more like this than it would the old style like that. It would have this much white on it if they reprinted it like this, but they didn't. I think they put gold around it to differentiate, and then the back is different. So, But you know if you're a commander player, they would just throw that in there anyway in their deck if, if they were going to play it like a player. Now we're going to look at some more uh, vintage stuff here. Uh, I just wanted to show you kind of what I've got. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see what we got. <laughs> Candelabra of Tonus, right? I don't own this card, it's kind of pricey. I think it was like $900,000. Came in the group. Again, this card, definitely fake. It's almost, it's kind of obvious. It's just way too glossy. The color is a little off, honestly. They didn't really look like that. It's just, it, it's really off and not, not real. If I want to play with it, it'd be kind of fun. Bloodstained Meyer again. A lot of these I noticed that the color is just it's either too saturated or too it's like it's not dark or the ink isn't isn't dark enough. There's something wrong with the color saturation or the ink or something. It just doesn't look good. Um these these are obviously fetch lands. Uh the enlightened the enlightened tutor looks pretty good, honestly. Um 
let's see what it looks like in a sleeve. Like, I honestly would think I would, wouldn't catch this if I was, um, I think it's a bit dark. It's like a slightly off, but if I saw a player play this, I would have no clue that that was a proxy. It looks pretty legit in a sleeve. Now, obviously, because uh, the sleeve obviously masks, masks the the surface style. So if I took it out of a sleeve and then looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a fake. I know that for sure. It's a proxy. But um, you can kind of see where this is going. Um, we got a few others here. They just reprinted this recently, but nonetheless, again, this card looks, doesn't look right. It looks like it's a little off on color. I don't know why they could want to reprint this or, I mean, to proxy this or whatever to fake it, whatever. Berserk is, is definitely off. I just don't remember a uh, Berserk being this color. Now, if they were trying to reproduce the beta right off the bat, I mean, <laughs> you'd have to be a complete and total new person to magic to think this is a real Berserk. I mean, first of all, the surface is totally wrong. The, um, the rosette pattern is totally wrong. The actual, the print quality on this is better than the original print quality for beta for one and all the beta cards have a little like i think it's like a marker on the corner to show where the edge of the card is it's kind of funny the way that works but anyway uh, i just wanted to show you some fake ones here imperial seal which just got reprinted but it's a fake one got dual lands so yeah these are fake dual lands now this bayou, I probably couldn't tell if it was in a sleeve, if it was fake. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Especially if I just left it out in the sun and let it get dirty or something. And it had that yellowing. I would never know. I would just think it was a played bayou. But you can kind of see what's going on there. Yeah, that looks pretty legit. I mean, from far away, it's pretty pretty good for revised. Because... Now, the thing about revised cards, let's just, I did bring some of those. Do I have a couple here? Okay, I guess this Earthbind will do. So, this Earthbind is a real one. And, um, yeah, it's not the right color, I guess. What I'm saying is that these didn't print, they didn't print these as dark as some of the other ones. And they could, you know, the fakes look pretty close to a revised card a lot of times. But, again, the thickness is off. It just, it, this is way too thin. It's like the... It was like the when they used to call it the paper point or something. I don't remember. There was a term for it. But here we got volcanic island. No big deal. Vampiric tutor. <laughs> Time vault. Time vault. Ah, uh, great car, but again, fake is fake. Can we get this show and tell again is a bit too off. It's like it's clear, easy to read, but it's too dark. I think slightly dark. Nether void definitely fake. Obviously, I mean this card had a sort of believe it or not wasn't. It wasn't quite as dark as this, or as weird as it is. It was a little bit, a little slightly, a little bit matte, a little bit gray, and it was on a matte finish. So, uh, it looks like an alpha or beta, or an attempt at a beta demonic tutor. Uh, we had an attempt here at a gauntlet of mine, uh, the abyss, diamond valley from Arabian Nights. Again, more <laughs> underground sea. Honestly, if this underground sea was across the table from me and it was in a darker place, I would have no clue if that was real or not. I'd have to literally look at it and then see that, oh, wow, yeah, that's way too shiny. It's, it's fake. But in a sleeve, I would never know because the sleeve, you know, the surface of the sleeves are pretty shiny. Forest Field. I always wanted this card. Never could afford to get it, but there we go. Way off. I know the color on this one is really, like, washed out it's like it's the best way i could describe it is there's too much white in it it's like it's washed out or something there's an led lion's eye diamond let's see how they did they didn't do too good guys there's there's the real one um you can kind of see the brown is honestly this one the brown is wrong so i mean you can kind of see it's close don't get me wrong it's not too far off but it's just it's not there. And, of course, you know, again, there's way more gold. Even through the holder, you can see that it's more matte than this one. So, this would never pass muster as far as, like, a fake or something. Like, if you try to get it graded or something or brought it to any um, card shop worth their salt, they would just throw this back in your face and say that's completely fake. This thing is ridiculously fake. I mean, yeah, it's Mishra's Workshop. $2,000 card, but, uh, yeah fake 
Uh, Gaia's Cradle. Here we go. Now, this one, I was kind of impressed. They got it close. I want to say that they're slightly off. I'd say it's a little... You know, if I didn't own a guy's cradle, I would have thought this was real in a sleeve. Like, let's let's throw it in a sleeve. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. It's in a sleeve. And then there's this one. I don't know, guys. Honestly, it's close. Um, again, the thickness is off. It's a little bit thin, and the back is too glossy for this particular set. But in a sleeve... Um, you know, it, you could just say it was a slight off print. You know, it could have been ugh, so close. It's close. This one was like, wow. But you know how much I paid for this whole stack? A proxies. $28. Seriously, we're not done. There's a lot more to go. So, Mana Crypt. I know, that looks terrible. That is completely off. I've seen the original. It's not even close. Tolarian Academy, I own this card. I didn't want to go digging for it, but yeah, um, Tolarian Academy. Pretty close, but again, it's a bit washed out. The color's a bit off slightly. Got a scrubbly and <laughs> underground sea. Dual land, underground sea. It looks fairly legitimate. I mean, if I beat the thing up maybe and then stuck it in a sleeve, who's going to know? I mean, I guarantee if I left this out in the sun... And, or on a, on a shelf and left it out. It would just like a faded out underground sea. Force of Will. I actually own a couple of these. And, can, and they definitely are, I guess, that matte finish versus the gloss. And mm, color's close, but this one's actually closer to the real one. That's about right. I've seen and invoked this This card's ultimately super banned by, by Wizards for looking like yeah, they look like, uh, what do you think they look like? And it's invoked the prejudice, and they got hoods and robes on and stuff. So, yeah, that was the thing. Theoretically, they said that the artist was a bit of a, you know, one of those kind of people that we don't like in this world. All right, so we got Savannah, Rashidan, Port. This looks pretty close, but, again, these old cards, it's really hard to fake on it. They just... Now, here's the weird part, though. When they reprint these cards in any of the newer sets, like if they reprint with the old border like this, I'll tell you what, it's getting harder. Like, if they print it like this, if they don't put the little, um, what is it, the hologram down there, which I think they do that. Now, even on the new reprint stuff, they put a hologram there. I think. I could be wrong. I have the original Maze of it. This looks like crap. I have this car, the original, and also looks like crap. Ancient Tomb. The Traders, the City of Traders actually looked pretty solid. I think this orange is slightly more orange on the real one. Really close. Polluted gel, too. It's fetch land. Why they decided to proxy this, I don't know. Is there something I need to know about? Illusionary Mask, but I'm not going to read the wall of text. I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> Chains of Mephistoles. Mestifa... <sighs> Mestifoles. Mestifoles, I guess. Mephistoles. Yeah, I guess that's how you say it. And then Bazaar of Baghdad. Um, again, the color on the border is it's got it's really kind of off. I just feel like that's not what that looks like when back in the day. So again, these are the vintage stuff, the old stuff, vintage and legacy stuff. Not that good. Um, but here, here's a real one. Here's a real guy's cradle. It's pretty close. I'll give them credit. Not bad. Uh, let's see what else we got here that's real from that area. Okay, well, here's just the uh, card I just random picked up. Again, the Legends cards, even like inside this little um, sleeve, you can kind of see it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to tell actually through the sleeve, but if I pull it out, you'll see. So yeah, the finishes again, it's more, it's kind of rougher and, and older. It just it has a different feel to it. So what's in there is just obviously, that's how you identify the fakes and stuff. Now we're going to jump to the stuff that's like really kind of a mind blower. It came in the set. It came with all of them, honestly. And uh, yeah, I should probably throw these guys in here too. So let's take a look at these, right? Honestly, if I saw these in a deck and so in a sleeve, yeah, I would have no clue. Yeah, a couple of them are even misprinted slightly. I was like, yeah, okay, well, Lizard does that. Watch this, guys. I mean, this is more modern stuff. 
I still think that's a bit too glossy, but I'll tell you right now, if I stuck this in a sleeve, because this modern car, because the printing is, you really can't mess up on that, I would have no clue. Honestly, this is this is a proxy card, or a fake, or whatever you want to call it, but I, honestly, in a sleeve, if I was playing against this, not in the slightest, unless I actually went up to it and looked at it. It's, there's something weird about the text that's slightly blurry as compared to like a normal one. Like, let me get a regular magic card. Maybe it's kind of old. Um, there's just something different about the way the text is. It's just like slightly blurry. It's like it's a picture of a card. A really good picture, but it's like a picture of a card. But yeah, inside of a sleeve, I would never know that these weren't uh, real. I mean, this is ridiculous. The point I'm trying to make is for Commander players, Wizards has opened up a can of worms. There's, there's this, like, this unspoken rule about proxies. In many cases, I've been in situations where you're not allowed to play with proxies. They don't like that. Because it's just like people have spent hundreds, some of them thousands of dollars to build some of their decks. And I paid $28 for a stack of 108 cards of, of easily what would have otherwise been maybe $100,000 worth of magic cards. And I look at my look at this and I'm like, well, anybody could do this and I would have no clue. And unless I was really that cared about it and looked in their deck and started taking it apart and figuring out what was going on, why would I do that? Nobody does that, especially in Commander where most of it's casual. Guaranteed, you know, with Wizards, what they're doing, with the price increases and all the other stuff, this old stuff, they've opened the door for, for players to purchase this crap, these proxies. Now, here's the deal about this, guys. I, I don't like them. It kind of makes me mad because this is a thing that really screws over the local game store. Because the idea behind this game was that it's, it has an economy to it. The game itself, the reason why people play it is not just because it's a fun card game, which it is. But your cards retain value. You know, and you're, you have to be able to take those cards and resell them or maybe trade them to purchase other cards or whatever. Yeah, they took that away with the with the opening the the door to making proxy cards. They say you can't play them, but they're basically making proxies. And you know, commander players or people making a cube if they have if they're a whale like that and can afford that, they're just going to dump it in their cube or their commander deck. So, well, let's take a look at these. These are all modern cards, and I'm going to tell you right now. These modern cards look pretty legit. I mean, I gotta I gotta admit these are pretty. Hard to tell. In a sleeve, I couldn't tell. Now, out of a sleeve, I could most definitely tell these are fake. But in a sleeve, it's it's hard. It really is. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys. Um, Wizards have done a weird thing. They have op Now, this lily looks way off. i got to tell you right now. this And they do have a little bit... They're a bit dark. Like A lot of them are a bit dark from what I remember. This lily is way off. Though, this one's, this one's very dark. You can kind of see, you know, the text on it's a little... Again, a little fuzzy and weird. I don't explain it. Have owned the real car like this. Misty Rainforest is a little bit too washed out. Um, and again, the thickness is off on every single one of these. They're like thin and flimsy. And but here we go. We got a Cavern of Souls. I did get another Cavern of Souls to compare to. And again, you can see the problems here. So look at the coloring. Uh, this is a real one. That's a fake one. The fake one's coloring is just slightly off. It just it's just not there. And, um, uh, yeah, so, guys, proxies are not a thing, you, you know, and it's just weird. Wizards has done a strange thing, and I think they've shot themselves in the foot, because this whole card game is based around the economy of being able to consider these cards valuable, and something you, Jace is way off. Look at this Jace, Mind Sculptor. I mean, if you just want to play with Jace and can't afford the, I don't know, is he only $40, $50 bucks now? He's gone down a lot. Blood Moon, Marsh Flats, Snapcaster Mage. Again, these are dark. The color is off on all of them. They're just slightly not there. But some, and this, this Emrakul is way off. It's like, it's just way too dark. It's like when you just don't, don't have your color set right or something. Same thing with this Chrome Box. A lot of these are really dark. The Tarmogoyf is just off. The, the coloring's bad on them. But some of these, honestly, like these swords, if I saw this across the table, I'd have no idea. I think they were legit. 
you know? But here's the thing we got to have a conversation about, guys. I've already, I went to a lot of Commander games, quite a few, where people were playing with uh, proxies that they either printed out themselves or there's some kind of Reddit thread and some kind of thing where you can buy ones that look better than these, apparently, with the little stamp on some of them. I didn't know until they told me, and I was like, oh, you're playing with proxies. Let's kind of, it's a weird thing. I like to play this game. I really do. I enjoy magic. It's a fun game to play. Um, I like building decks. I like the whole challenge of making a deck and hoping it works good and do cool things. But at the same time, it, the reason why I keep the cards and I keep cards is because they hold an intrinsic value that I can go ahead and then, you know, uh, tr sell them at some point if I need the money and use that money for something else. But the can of worms Wizards has opened by doing what they're doing. By continually reprinting things and making weird versions of old stuff. And they're opening the door for this. Because, you know, again, like I said, with this vintage stuff, I'm never going to buy a bizarre... I mean, might. I don't know. If I get rich someday, maybe I'll buy one. The real one. A chains. All these people. I'm not going to buy this stuff. You know, maybe I'll be able to afford some of this stuff someday. Or I'll pick one up at a convention and... But the fact that I could buy all of this for $28 and get all of this is kind of a, it's a bit of a wake up call in that, what are we, what are we saying magic is? Is it a game? Are these the game pieces? Yes, they are. These are game pieces, all of them. To make a deck, you need this stuff. But at the same time, we're taking the game pieces and calling them almost like rare collectible coins or anything that's comparable that's collectible. We are literally consider giving them a, a value, just like even in money itself, they say it has no real value. It's what people believe its value is. The same thing with magic cards. It's a fiat currency. People trade these for stuff. They sell them and then they take the money that they made and trade it for something else. So it is a kind of currency, kind of like crypto or any of that stuff. NFTs, if you want to call it those, and you look that up, I... I'm still confused about NFTs, but whatever. People people have that stuff. Uh, let's see. I also have a Sliver Legion in this pile here. We're going to compare it to a real one. That's a real Sliver Legion. So we're going to see what is in this pile. I think there was a Sliver Legion in here somewhere. Hold on. So we know Cavern is completely... There it is. There's the fake one. So here's the fake and there's the real. And a sleeve, I probably... It's pretty good. These two are pretty close. I gotta admit, uh, this one's slightly too dark. But I'll tell you right now, drop. let's drop it in a, in a sleeve. Let's see, I might have the same color sleeve too. I actually do. This one's got something written on it, but nonetheless. Let's say I put in the sleeve, the same one as the one I got, I think. Yeah, look at that, it just happens to be the same one. Um, honestly, I can't tell. It looks like a magic card. It just looks like a normal magic card. But I'll tell you right now. If I was playing against somebody and they played this Legion. And there's my real one. I, I mean, honestly, a new plant magic player. If you sold this to them. They'd probably think it's real. You know, somebody that just started the game. Like a 16, 17, 18 year old kid. Wants to build a sliver deck. You could put that in there and they would have a real, they would think it's real, but then it's just fake. But the whole proxy thing is a big, I and mean, Wizards really put it in people's faces. Wizards is forcing players to do this. And it's bad for the, the, the biggest loser in all this is going to be the LGS's, seriously. Your local game store needs to stay open to be able to, they're not even supporting standard very much anymore. And, and even the, the game stores aren't getting all the, the support they used to get just 10, 15 years ago. So a lot of the game stores are on life support, just selling singles like these, you know, um, but the real ones are selling the real ones like this one. The point I'm trying to make is that, um, this is going to hurt game stores a lot. If we don't have game stores or a place where magic community thrives, the community is a thing. You know, guys like on, you know, like Rudy like to make fun of it a little bit and say, huh, community, LOL, whatever. 
it is a thing and you your your card game cannot thrive if there's no community that surrounds it and feels happy about it like the reason I play this game is to feel happy, or at least try to anyway, and have a good time, and spend time with friends, or meet new people that play this game and enjoy it. But the places I would do that, like a card shop, how can a card shop stay in business selling magic if any Chinese company can just make make a pile of them for dirt? I mean, granted, these, these aren't very good ones, but let's just say for a second... You know, I had a little bit better ones. If they can reproduce this, exactly. It's pretty close. Like I said, these are pretty darn... Slightly too dark, but all the honesty in the sleeve, like I said, I... It's gonna hurt the net. It's gonna hurt the local game stores. Those LGSs are just gonna... It, it bothers me about this game because Wizards did all this to themselves. You know, they had... Magic was full, the hype around Magic was, and all the new sets was that hey, these new cards were thought about. There was good mechanics involved. There was a theme to it. The the set, you always you know you would have to wait three and four months for a set, so you'd have a lot of anticipation built up and all that kind of thing. What it takes like two weeks, three weeks sometimes, and up oh, there's another set. Another two weeks, there's another set. There's another set. So you don't really have any of the hype. It's like okay. People get burnout, you know, it's just wallet fatigue and burnout and people just don't want to pay double the price what they paid three years ago for the same thing. You know, I, I don't get me wrong, some of the art on the new stuff's really pretty. I will admit, there's some really nice stuff, but I don't know, card mechanics, they just keep going down these weird rabbit holes with that. And I mean, I understand kind of what they're trying to do, but you know, some stuff is just good. You know, things like this are broken. I mean, yeah, Cradle, It's that's the real one, obviously. But, yeah, they're broken. But at the same time, card mechanics were thought about a lot back in the days. You know, there was play testing. I don't think they play test any of the new cards. Good luck. They might do it, like, for a week or two. And then they go, okay, so that's good. Push it through. Because, um, you know, Hasbro is cracking the whip on them. But, guys, this is a conversation, a big one. It's a really big deal. I'm a, I've been playing this game for <laughs> not 30 years. That would be, I'd be too young at that point. But let's just say I've been playing it for about 23, 4, 5, somewhere around there. You know, I started playing the game in Ice Age, I think it was. Well, you could buy those packs. Ice Age didn't just come out. I think it was, it was already in like Weatherlight and some of those other ones. But there were plenty of Ice Age packs and alliances and a little bit of the dark and some of the older stuff. But it was kind of, I was a kid. They were too pricey. But, uh, you know, I'm really worried about this game because I have a lot of money invested in these cards. And if somebody can just, co this is a lousy copy, obviously for $28, like 100 cards. You know, they didn't make a lot of effort to make them. But the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, where are we going? Wizards open up a can of worms. I've played against multiple commander players now that are running decks that are half proxies. Like, ha like there's decks that run all this. I didn't know until they told me because they had them in sleeves. How would I know? I put this sort of body of mine in a sleeve. You, you can tell me. And no, in this area, you're going to say, oh, well, Ivy, it doesn't have the, um, the stamp. But they didn't have stamps back then. They didn't do that, I think, until 20... I want to say like 2014 or 15. I think sometime in 2015 they or 16 they added the stamps. Maybe even later. I'm not sure. But I know it was... This card is older than that. I think it's from 10. 2010, I believe. Am I right? Yep, 2010. So they didn't have stamps. So yeah, this... I would never know. Because it doesn't matter. It's just an old card. It looks like a sort of body in mind to me. I guess, I guess if I looked really close, I'd be like, hmm. Something's up with that one. But other than that, it looks legit to me. I, I, if I was playing this in a deck or someone was playing it, looks like a magic card. It's a game piece, just like the you know the Tolarian professor says. Yeah, they're game pieces, but this is a weird situation to be in. It's just very strange with this game, and I'm not sure Wizards has created a, kind of a funk that they don't realize that they've created by their own greed, or maybe Hasbro's greed. That it's not, I don't know, it's going to be healthy for the game. It's just you can't charge, keep upcharging and upcharging and upcharging for the same thing that somebody somewhere 
is going to do for way cheaper. Oh no, Power 9. <laughs> I always wanted the real one of those. You know, maybe someday, you never know. You know, I got me, but yes, I, I do now own a Black Lotus. Maybe I should eat this one. It's pretty tasty. <laughs> kind of tasty. You should eat the Black Lotus now. No, not really, huh? Okay. Anyway, guys, um, that's my conversation I wanted to have about proxies. You know, it's just quite a picture to see all these cards in a pile like that. I just want to see if, if it thumbnails like that, what people click on it and it's such clickbaity stuff but nonetheless I wanted to kind of talk about this and the can of worms that's going on right now and I really feel bad for the local game store that uh, supports wizards because if you don't do other products <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of in the weeds right now with wizards I, I don't know I just feel bad for LGS's that are just stuck trying to sell singles that you know I Wizards just keeps doing stuff that just makes players want to quit or want to buy proxies. And I'll tell you what, if, if, I, if I didn't see it and I didn't experience it, where I've played now against at least five, six, seven, eight commander game, commander players, not just games, but players, running multiple proxies like these. Yeah, that's the thing. All right, guys, long video. Hope you uh, appreciate what I was trying to point out here with the proxy situation. And uh, Wizards 30th Anniversary $1,000 rip-off set. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in my um, in my Voltron deck. <laughs> Looks real. No one. Who's going to know? How are they going to know? Who's going to know? <laughs>